Hello and welcome to JetCast, the monthly broadcast from JetMS, the global provider of integrated world-class aircraft solutions. My name is Michael Jonga. I am a journalist with Airtime, and I'm delighted to be your host for the second edition of JetMS JetCast. Now, you are joining us here in the Airtime Hub building right in the heart of Vilnius, where this building was recently opened with a special aviation theme in the atrium this retired Bombardier CRJ-200. So how did this aircraft land here in Aerocity Tech Valley in Vilnius? Let's meet the JetMS team behind this architectural treat who can tell us more about it. So Vitas Agvile Dima, it's a pleasure to have you here uh, right in front of this beautiful aircraft, obviously which your team put here in the building. And there's such an amazing story behind how this aircraft got here. And I just want to dive in right there. So maybe for you, Vitas, you can tell us about where the idea came from to put an aircraft in a building. Hi, Michael. Uh, well, let's be honest here. Idea came straight from our chairman, Mr. Gidimina Jamalis. Uh, I remember uh, when the request came in, can we do it? Can we put the build into the building, the aircraft? And we all was shocked. I remember Dima, the, the engineer team, like, was living peaceful life, uh, doing their job in the hangar. And that's a, this request to put the aircraft inside a, a new office. Uh, yeah, we were shocked, uh, but uh, you know, as a visionary person is coming with the interesting, challenging, unique idea, you need to do something. So we did, we, 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 we sat with the team of uh, engineers, construction team, and we figure out how to make it happen. Theoretically, it looked possible. So we just needed to gain strength uh, to try it and look what we have it's a it's a piece of art uh, for all of us you know it's it's really a daring challenge and sometimes you know it's the most daring challenges that you just can't say no to and you know which really brings me to Dima because it was your team you know as the head of the uh, technical department it was your team that was responsible for making this all happen now just keeping that in mind and just looking at the scale of such an operation can you tell us, you know, what were some of the challenges or how challenging was it? Yes, of course. So it was a lot of challenges. First challenge is the to remove the wing from the fuselage. So it's not normal procedure when you are doing the normal maintenance on the aircraft. Uh, the second challenge was just uh, to make the um, supports and transportation stands to make uh, to make it happen here. And the last one is was to lower the wing and to connect to the with the fuselage and inside the building. Can you can you expand more on that? On on you know taking an aircraft apart, lowering it inside a building while the building is being constructed, and then putting it back together inside the building. Can you expand more about how how you achieve that? Yes, of course. So we needed to plan the process how we will do it. Um, and in the very beginning, it was one plan with the construction team because it was uh, planned to uh, c construct the building around the plane by some uh, difficulties be, uh, in the construction uh, process. Uh, it was decided that we will need to put the aircraft uh, from the top of the roof to inside the building. So. Um, with that plan, we moved forward and uh, we have asked the certificate holder about the correct procedure, but the simple one, uh, because uh, the point was to um, do the e uh, much easier because we don't need the uh, to keep aircraft air in air working condition. So they provided for us uh, all the instructions. We started to prepare the equipment, uh, supports, and uh, one day, uh, actually, we disconnected the wing from the fuselage in one day. Uh, as I remember now, it was a rainy day. Mm -hmm. and uh, Yes, it was. It was uh, designated only uh, 10 people uh, to do that process. But all entire team, that depends on the weather outside, just <laughs> wanted to connect us to remove it because it was not, not uh, uh, daily routine, you know. So, um, yeah, so we, uh, during the removal uh, fuselage from the wing, uh, we forced the uh, unforeseen thing uh, that uh, provided instruction for us for the lowering the wing uh, was with the equipment 
probably uh, calculated the center of gravity of the wing, not in that place. So what was uh, surprised for us, as soon as we started to lower the, air, uh, the wing, it was started to rotate. So it means that uh, the center of gravity of the wing went back. So uh, we didn't, didn't have uh, any chance uh, what to do, so we needed to lower it. Uh, we used some ballast, uh, adjusted the equipment, so anyway we lowered it. Uh, the second thing uh, we forced inside the building, uh, because this is the uh, dimension of the inside uh, of the building and the fuselage is uh, 27 meters, so we needed to lower the wing, uh, place the wing in exact place and the lower fuselage after, because the equipment that we used before to lower, it would not be able to rise the, aircraft, uh, the wing to the fuselage because of the center of gravity. So we needed just to place first of the wing and then the lowered fuselage connected. So, but anyway, uh, um, when we did in, in the morning, the next day in the morning, the connection, uh, it even were uh, much uh, smoothly when we planned to. And uh, after that, it was uh, left just to connect uh, the horizontal stabilizer in, in the tail uh, to install some other fairings, what is the normal and uh, routine for us. So we did that. I can share a secret here because uh, Dima now looks very relaxed, but uh, I have all those behind scenes shots <laughs> uh, where his face was so serious. <laughs> so. <laughs> Thanks God, everything went well. <laughs> I mean, that's actually quite, you know, the extensive technical breakdown there, just talking about the movement for, of the aircraft from the airport right here and all the little technical details that you elaborated on, you know, down to the center of gravity, which is quite exciting. And something that you mentioned earlier about everyone on the team wanted to be a part of that project, which really links nicely, Agvila, into the question for you, because when you look at a project such as this, there are so many aspects to it that it's not just about hardware, but about telling the whole story. So Agvile, what was your approach to this project? I mean, there must have been an enormous amount of project management that went on behind the scenes to get all this together. Yeah, so actually I just realized that uh, we have uh, the same word in our heads, which is challenge. <laughs> so I can just agree with the Vitas that when first uh, I heard about this project, I was thinking that it's even impossible to make it happen. But um, as we are constantly saying at JetMS, we take those challenges and make it happen. So my mission here was uh, to film everything nicely from the very beginning till the end and to make this uh, nice and exceptional story public and very well known globally. So um, that required a lot of efforts and uh, not only mine efforts, but of course, I had uh, to uh, I had to cooperate uh, with our engineers, with our city authorities, with police authorities, with many other uh, uh, professionals who were involved to this project from the very beginning till the end. So maybe that was uh, the biggest challenge for me because uh, uh, you know we at the same time we uh, usually we have. Uh, many other important projects. So from time to time, I, I felt like a uh, team from the hangar is distracting me and calling me, okay, Aquila, now we will, uh, we will be doing such an important uh, task with this aircraft, please come here. And I went all the time. So um, yeah, that was uh, one and, and still is one of the most interesting projects in, during the entire my career. And, you know, just, just sticking on this word challenge, you know, normally yeah. challenges are, are just the gateway to more opportunities. And yeah. again, this undertaking was so massive, involving, just as you mentioned, yeah. a lot of aspects of, the, of JetMS as a company and the teams as well. And the big question that then comes, which I guess will be for you, Vitas, is that will JetMS be taking on more projects like this in the future and maybe even just taking it deeper? Do you, uh, do you want more projects like these or do you have any, kind of, uh, any other kind of exceptional projects that are in the pipeline? Well, definitely after the huge success here, we would love to have more projects, but uh, let's be honest here, uh, this is uh, not happening that often, unfortunately. 
but if it would happen, we would support uh, any company or any organization in the world with, with, with such idea. From the exceptional projects uh, right now, uh, I would say our daughter company within the UK is about to start refurbishment of the first BBJ in our history. So it's not about the building, but it's about the amazing aircraft converting into the, uh, into the beauty. So I would say that, but uh, looking forward, we are always uh, open. Very nice. And I want to I want to touch on something that Agvile expanded upon. It's going to be a question for you, Dima. But Agvile <laughs> said that your team was calling her and telling her that okay, the project now is is you know at this point, and we're moving this aircraft there. And obviously, your team is quite proud uh, about the work that they've achieved, which is you know rightfully so. And looking at aircraft overhaul, it's such a complex operation to achieve. You know, with all the different. Uh, pieces of the puzzle that need to be aligned. But can you tell us more about how you would go about a more traditional overhaul project? So uh, one of the important thing is the, the planning of the project. Uh, our, our planning team is uh, preparing uh, just before arriving the aircraft, uh, mainly three, uh, three weeks before aircraft is coming, we are preparing the paperwork, we are preparing uh, the parts uh, to be delivered, also, our procurement team is uh, doing the very first uh, steps here also. And uh, when we receive the aircraft, all our hangar team talking to the uh, planning make a smooth plan uh, because as, as, uh, as much smooth plan will be in the hangar, as much uh, uh, faster we will do and of course uh, quality of the project will be performed uh, much better. So. Like uh, this is our uh, daily small challenges, uh, not like this one uh, to put inside the building, but anyway, this is the daily uh, challenges for us. And we have the daily routine. Uh, uh, and with that daily routine, uh, we are uh, tracking the pro uh, p uh, process. Uh, here helps for us uh, the link. Uh, Technology, so we are uh, tracking daily the process to be uh, sure that uh, we will be in time with the aircraft because it's uh, very important not, not only for us to release the aircraft uh, in time but also to the customer. So, and uh, as soon as we release the aircraft, that uh, communication with customers uh, not ending because we really. Uh, it's uh, really important for us uh, to provide the feedback. How is uh, how is the aircraft? Uh, all is good, or we need to support some with additional things. So time time by time, customer come back for us, uh, and their feedback is very uh, important for us as well. So Dima, as I understand, Jeremes uh, has a particular expertise working with a Bombardier aircraft. But what other aircraft does uh, JetMS work with? Mm -hmm. So we are ex experienced, uh, like you mentioned, not only on the uh, Bombardier aircraft, which includes uh, the Challenger 604, 605, uh, 850, uh, but also we are doing the maintenance for Embraer type aircraft, the, for the commercial one and the VAP jets uh, like Legacy 600. Uh, also, we experienced uh, to do the maintenance on the Hawkers. This is the smaller aircraft uh, from uh, 800 to 900 uh, XP. And um, uh, also, we doing the services for the cabin refurbishment and painting, which is, locate, uh, uh, which is located in the Biggin Hill Airport. So uh, we keep extending our capability. Mm -hmm. And just, just looking at it, extending the capabilities, um, uh, Agvila, it brings me back to, to something you mentioned earlier about how this went really global. Yeah. And just looking at that, at this project, really, it's, it's quite exciting. And clearly, when you undertake a project like this, it gets quite a lot of attention. Yeah. Now, when the building was first opened, the aircraft in the atrium story went all around the world. Can you tell us about the reach it got? Yeah, actually, we get enormously huge reaction from the global media, from the journalists, from our partners, from our customers. But the most uh, interesting questions were exactly from the media representatives, 
And here I can give you an example. Uh, some of them sounded like where Vilnius is located. <laughs> Please tell us more. So <laughs> then I realized that uh, this uh, video, this story, was uh, a good advertisement not only for us, because we just shared was what we did, but uh, it was a very good advertisement for our Vilnius, <laughs> which is the capital of Lithuania. So uh, yeah, I, of course, uh, I gave all the answers I had. I shared everything I had. And uh, actually, this uh, year, we were very active uh, at the main shows uh, of business aviation. And uh, uh, as well, I have one interesting story here. One journalist from uh, Canada visited us in our booth and she asked me, okay guys, I just came here to check you because I didn't believe in the story. Please uh, tell me once again, how did you do this? And uh, when we can visit you in that uh, exceptional building? So um, uh, yeah, I think that uh, message was one of the most popular uh, from Jetamaz was established. <laughs> yeah. So. You know, that's, that's, that's again quite a unique yeah. story. Again, talking about, you know, the, this treat, you know, this architectural treat of, yeah. of the aircraft uh, right here in, 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 in Vilnius in this building. And Vitas, I guess this, this brings me to you just to, just to try and cap, cap this off. How does this project encapsulate Jetamaz? Is it a project that makes Jetamaz stand out from the crowd? Well, Michael, uh, this is what we have here and what we achieved. Uh, this is we. A huge challenge to achieve, non-standard project. And lack of belief in the beginning and a huge glory and celebration in the end. So for me, this is a business card. The business card which uh, helped us to become more visible uh, in the global market not only in the regional as we used to be, but in a global market on a big scale, yeah. right Aquila? Yeah, and if I can add here, so that was a COVID period. And um, meanwhile, other aviation companies were quite silent. We were talking and quite loudly. So I think that helped us uh, to promote our brand because at the same time we been rebranded and we changed a lot of things in our company, inside the company and outside the company. And this is a great symbol of that. And for me, you know, when anyone is saying that something is impossible, <laughs> yeah. I'm saying, look at this. That's us. <laughs> Everything is possible. Right. And uh, huge, huge respect for the team and for the guys which did it. So, mm -hmm. nothing to add. It was definitely <laughs> a daring project and one that will stay in the hearts of all aviation lovers. So, Vitas, Ekvile, Dima, thank you for sharing such an amazing story about how this aircraft landed here. And unfortunately, we have run out of time in this JetMS Jetcast episode, but we'll be back next month with more, so stay tuned more for that. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Michael Jonga, and you've been watching Jetcast from JetMS. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.